Uh, Monday, July 14th, 2014, uh, 3 p.m. at the board's executive office. This has been appointed pursuant to the designation of the board of the Commissioner's Cover Sheet Review Committee. Uh, Commissioners, would you identify yourselves for the record? Michael Michelle, Queens Republican. Jose Roger, Queens Democrat. Steve Richmond, Board General Counsel. Rafael Sino, Deputy General Counsel. And each of the members of the uh, staff will introduce as they make the presentations. Commissioners, we have for you today mostly uh, cut defective cover sheets, uh, and I believe, or, and or petition volumes. I believe we have one or two amended covers, but came from Tuesday. So, Jacqueline Commit will present New York County first. Uh, Julie, yeah, that's the easiest one. Okay, so this is a designating petition for the Tamika map, uh, and we were alerted that there's page number defects. If you look, uh, two, oh, this is page 24, and the next page is page 26, there's a missing 25. And then the second is there are two page 32s. Francesca Castellanos. Uh, if you look at her ID numbers, they are incomplete. They omit the borough. Uh, so technically, I guess it could be for any borough. So the, the team shorted up. And then also, she doesn't put a full uh, title of the office she's running for. It just says member. And it could be a member of assembly or a member of the Democratic State Committee. Do we give the same ID numbers in different counties? Okay, so that's why it's important to yes. have QN, page, QN, all right. Commissioner, we would start in the sequence, and for the federal primaries, we started at zero. For the September primaries, we started at 100 for each county. So there's a QN 100, a KG 100, each of the other boroughs. So you hit it on the head. It's exactly correct. Without that, we're not sure which borough could be attributed to. Problem for for uh, these two candidates, Argentina Cruz and Miguel Cruz. They omit the thorough identification for their ID numbers. And same problem for Michael Ortiz and Grisha Furman and Mercedes Regalado. Jenks, he has no zip code on his cover sheet, although he had no zip code in the petition ID, or uh, petition volume. The question what we're recommending is you find the book that the cover sheet should be amended to correct the zip code. We'll give them a prima facie defect to come to address the petition problem. Um, you said the cover sheet should reflect the petition? Correct. But it does. It's missing, it has the extra zero and missing the number, so they're identical. They're, what are you doing? The question we're trying to do, Commissioner, is to give them the opportunity to either cure one or the other. They're right. If they file an amended cover sheet, won't match the petition. So I guess the other thing is we could defer action on the cover sheet until they act on the prima facie at the hearing. Well, if you send them the cover sheet notice, does that give them, uh, you, is there any indication that they need new printers? Well, we, we, we're, also giving, the, we're also giving them prima facie. You know, they say they're going to explain why your petition is wrong. That's because you're right. You may want to defer action on the cover sheet until after you do it, and then you can either deem it conformed and amended since if you accept that they're hearing the printer's letter, this is correct and then you would they, they literally cut cut and paste it. Right, because the cover sheet letter 
So what we should do is then we should separate the votes here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes. I mean, because it's identical, so there's no change. Right. Okay. So why don't we make a separate box here for number one? Number three. Commissioner, I think you want to have it as a no. So what we do is. Okay, so for these cover sheets for Michaels and Blaskus and this for Eggburn Ward, the last number that they're claiming is incomplete. It's not, uh, is it seven digits? Oh, seven There's only six digits here. That's not an ID number that we issued, have issued. That is correct. Yes, yes. we'll have three business days from today's date. So. No, but this says candidate claim petition that does not exist. Yeah. It, this it doesn't exist. exist. So now they have to claim the other petition. Right, that's what I'm not sure if he left out a zero or he left out a last digit like this. We, we shouldn't have to guess. But all they have to do is file an amendment with the correct correct You know what will happen is they'll come in and just set a cover sheet with this number, number and, and disclaim these, these two. Right. right? That's oh, what these ends up like. Yeah, they're just going well, to go in. Right. Commission, if they only claim one volume on the amended, that's what they sit with, and then they'll be subject to the challenge if they'll have enough. But uh, again, for an assembly member, New York State Senate, you need a thousand signatures or five percent. This is a Independence Party, so it's probably less. But again, the instructions that go in the letters to follow the amended, including a copy of either the original cover sheet or the notice. So if they follow the, a, a copy of the original cover sheet, with, which has the original two, let's say on the amended, they need these two out, you take it as a whole? No, no, but the whole point is to identify for you the benefit of the committee of what they're, what they're amending or why they're amending it. Or we tell them attach a copy of the, of the notice we sent to them, which should describe it as well, one or the other. Our letters is sufficient to describe which volume we're referring to? We will make sure that New York 140058 is, does not exist. Her, this candidate was not. His address on the cover sheet says 210 West 72nd, and the petitions to. And it's on all of them. Well, the petitions are all uniform. The only thing that's more difficult is the cover sheet. Right.
basically that's missing the behavior designation. I think it was just we repeat the numbers over the years, or somebody had stickers from last year and they put it on. Oh, put it on, right. Uh, State Assembly District 68. Uh, uh, right this year on the ballot, you'll have member of the Assembly as well as member of the Democratic State Committee, and this is a Democratic Party petition, both elected from the same district. So that's why you have to be specific as to which office you're seeking on the Assembly District level. So, so this is a prima facie. We're recommending to I believe it is. Doesn't it say prima facie? No, it does. It does, yeah. No, it, it, it actually. The cover sheet does not have the name of party, which is right. one, which is a prop. Uh, no, that's not the issue. The other one is name of office omitted from cover sheet. There's nothing here about the petition. I, I, I uh, talked with Siri when they informed me that they were going to be uh, putting it on their recommendation list. She's on the, what's that called? The She's the enrollment uh, uh, the, the issue, I believe. So why would we send there even a cover sheet defect? I believe technically if she argues that it's okay on the petition, she still needs to fix her cover sheet. Or else then we have a defective cover sheet with a good petition. I that was Normally we would recommend a prima facie. But since CIU said they've already issued one. Yeah, but if it's already this, is no good. Well, again, I my SP pitch, printed letter, saying I, I printed and I left out the title of the office. Well, yeah, but no, 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 but an, I'm sorry. There's right. an issue of the, the people signing this petition being informed that this is deceit. So that, <coughs> I don't think a printed letter will fix that, right? Again, they said that's the only potential way. I think you're right. I think it, the potential for confusion is such. That they can't, but the, we've made the decision that if errors relating to the petitions itself will be dealt with by the full board at the hearing. I don't disagree with that. I, think right. the other thing I, that I agree with you. I think it's a much harder argument to say that I clearly describe my office as opposed to I inadvertent the address and I put 210 down instead of 201. But that's a judgment call that you and your colleagues will make at the meeting to see if, and, and who printed it and what the problem was. Uh, the problem this year, I think, the confusion comes to the fact that there are two offices for the Democratic Party, one public office, one party position, both running co-terminus in the same district, and they have different titles, but somewhat similar. Both have the word state in it. Both have the assembly district number in it. One has, should be member of the assembly, the other should be member of the state committee. But this is fixable, this isn't. The only way it would be fixable <laughs> is that if the printer's letter and or the argument that may convince you and your colleagues at the hearing. My, our, my recommendation, I think, probably saying what you're is the potential for confusion is there, and based on the court decisions, that's a basis to invalidate the petition. Because I think Commissioner Rogers, in, you indicated when you looked at this as a signatory or potential signatory, mm -hmm. you didn't know what you were signing for. It's the same as if they left the entire district out as well. The question is, let me do it. We send a defect in the cover sheet, sending the wrong signal that they think everything's all right. Because sometimes they argue, well, you sent me. Well, no, they're also going to get signed. But the CIU has sent them, they may have already gotten the prima facie letter. No, right, but people show up at the hearing saying, but you sent me the NCN why did you notice. Send, right, why did you, so you send me to fix it? Right. If I can't, if, why, why did you send me this if you know I can't fix this? You we, give me the impression that this is fine. No, we, I think we've responded to commissioners in the past that it's two separate documents. And that's why you have two, in effect, two bites at the apple: one to deal with the cover sheet, one at the hearing to deal with the petition. And again, we've accepted printers' letters in the past for some yeah. other different. Pieces. But a printers' letter in the past was something that you could clear up. This is the, the right, ten, people, people, ten people. Ten people he assigned for state well, assembly seven, district yes. seventy-eight. <laughs> I think the only difference in you know my advocate for one or both or mm -hmm. I'm going to vote at the main hearing is, if you don't send them this, and then the commissioners rule that this is no good, or that this is good, then they're going to be out, because they never did this. 
So by giving them the NCN notice, you're giving them a shot to come back, to come to the hearing, and can make a convincing argument that convinces six of the commissioners at least. Right. Otherwise, commissioners, the other option would be to defer it. If you accepted the argument, then give them the three-day cure then to yeah, correct the cover sheet. And, and, and someone said we did earlier when we broke it up. Well, That's we good. did broke up the other one, but that was, I think, a little different from the commissioners here. Yeah, because then if you do that, then the three-day, you just... The zip code. Oh, the okay. zip code. Both were wrong in time, yeah. For Melanie Hidalgo, member of the State Assembly 72nd, uh, she does not list any ID numbers for so her protection. She's only one volume, she says. But she won't give me the number. She won't give it to you. She wants you to go by last name. Yeah, well, it's not common. These candidates from the 74th and 7th district, they've omitted the total number of volumes of petition line for their cover sheet. We just put one. That's supposed to. Yeah, they should put one. I don't know how many, how many they, they have. have. One, two, three. Right. Yeah. Well, where's the IC numbers? So this is the one you just was defending. Oh, so this, this, you have, this is the oh. line that's missing. Right. Oh, we total wrote in by red. Petitions. Oh, okay. So they, they, they but this is their cover sheet. This is their cover sheet, but which they made a copy of, but they didn't add that. They, when they file. When they no, cut I'm looking at this, so I'm thinking it's no. right, right, right. 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 Because when they cut and paste, they, they forgot to cut the top line. Yeah. And they have one, two, three, four, five volumes. Five, six, seven, eight volumes. I think they have one guy. Yeah, they have one That's the, uh, the state board the cover state, sheet, right? The, the cover sheet, yes, commissioners. It's the form, form approved by the yeah. state board, uh, right. sample prepared by the state board of elections. All right. I have an opportunity to claim this candidate, um, this cover sheet. I never claimed this, but he appears on it. So, Who's still in New York County? Yes. It's a cross office. It's a, yeah. And commissioners, they did not have the state senate. And commissioners, they did not put any exclusionary language that says we only claim these volumes and disavow all the others. So that's what the policy we changed in 2006 was instead of bouncing them as incomplete because not having everything else, we're giving them the opportunity to claim. The letter will say if they want to claim the volume, you got to file an amended cover sheet. If not, this will be excluded from consideration of your petition. Well, you have one amended. Just think. Okay, so the original problem was this candidate filed two cover sheets, each claiming a separate volume, and did not put a party. So what they, we sent them a letter telling them to file one cover sheet claiming both, and also to put a party on there. So they filed this in response, where they include the party volumes in which they want to claim the right of the valid cure. Okay. Yeah. 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 And the three day period is run. So they have no opportunity to follow anything else. If he signed a Republican before Election Day, he's a Republican. Well, if, it, if it's after Election Day, he's, he's eligible Republican. to run or not. Yeah, yeah I, he's not he's eligible. eligible. Okay, we'll, we'll check that for tomorrow. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll pull it tomorrow. 
you know, no, with wife at that moment. I forgot. You know, yeah, I got, he might have, I forgot the commissioner of Roger has a prior relationship, right. a, court, a court appointed relationship with him. Yeah, so. so that's okay. Uh, Ronald Kim, incorrect number listed on his cover sheet. He defended the yeah. The next one, uh, Republican alternate delegate for the Judicial Convention, he left out the zip code both on the petition and the cover sheet. So he's getting two letters. Or do you want to uh, do the same thing? So you should zip code on the snow cover sheet. And not on the petition. It's not on the petition. So again, if you get a printer's letter, the same argument is that then the cover sheet would not be correct. So we're that's why we're recommending the two lines. Right. Oh, two, two separate letters. Mm -hmm. And then there's more in the line of a traditional printer's error. Right. Here's a Democrat, Jan Jones, for state senate. On the cover letter, they left out the district, but here are the petitions. Democrat, but first state assembly, no district listed on the cover sheet, but it's on the petition. This one, uh, Republican for the a delegate to the judicial nominating convention, the cover sheet and the petition list a different middle initial. It makes a difference commissions or not. Because the first name and the last name match. Uh, did you have the buff card? Is there more than one uh, Marina Myrna. Litworth? Myrna Whitworth. Myrna. Myrna. We didn't pull the buff card. I can go look at all if you want. Great. Got it. Any discrepancy? Yeah, right no, now. I, uh, makes sense. Over to the next seat, we can start. Um, you got five times seven miles. Five times one hundred percent. Okay. We'll see in Brooklyn for last. Well, the first defect is here on the cover sheet. The candidate placed their information twice. All information is accurate. No, but we're accurate. recommending that it not be a defect. Just it seems that they repeated the same information twice. Yes, we vote no. Yeah. I, I can't figure out a rational basis, but it, it's not defective in any way. It's the exact same information repeated twice and it's correct twice. We want to make sure you know what he was for the 77. <laughs> Cover sheet does not list an apartment number, but the petition does list an apartment number in the address. And the board has deemed an apartment number being very vital to the address. And more importantly, Commissioner, we said that the cover sheet should match the petition. Commissioner, 
commission to try to sign it. Some of the notices that the committees authorized last week without a department notices, I think three or four came back today returned by the Postal Service yeah. as undeliverable. undeliverable. So I'm holding them together. So I think what we're talking about change and making clear the policy statement that the Postal Service four or five came back as undeliverable. Just because the only thing that's missing is the department. I told you, I have a PO box. Uh, this is an opportunity to claim the candidate, in addition to the petitions listed, also appears on the petition for Bronx number 181. Who's that? Michael Blake. Michael Blake, from member of the assembly. So we'd be getting an opportunity to claim if you want to claim an extra body. Within this right. Here the defect is the petition states one candidacy for office and the cover sheet says of one entirely different. Petition to members of the assembly and, they, and this is member of the Senate. Okay. The cover sheet should match the petition. They put it in their own box. It's just for this person, right? Just up. That yes. It's only applied. No. Uh, I don't know. That, that was cleared up. It was cleared up afterwards the way they put it together. The staff thought they were running together for two positions, but they're each running for one position. One is female district leader, one is female state committee member. So that's why there's no defect listed for that. It's only they said we can't. Here, the candidate uh, does not list the complete petition uh, office running for on the cover sheet or the petition. The petition doesn't have a number. Correct. It doesn't mean well, this, has has a number. The, the, this has 86. 86. This, this doesn't say 86. This says member assembly 86. If you think the cover sheet's good of the description, there would only be a prima facie. Well, this. The only thing, it doesn't, match it, it, it doesn't match it. If they match it, it's still defective, no matter which way you look at it. The petition, again, the same discussion, having not the description there. I don't, again, the only option would be to claim a print is error, but again, the, the issue of Commissioner Roger Ray was correct about the floor and perpetrator. And that's very hard oh, to do a print is error because it's <laughs> and also are included on the Bronx 310 and the Bronx 311, which are not claimed on the cover sheet. on the petition. We only had generals so far. First specs are due 
for the, we have a general, I think, on Wednesday. Tonight. Yeah. And we have a slew of generals probably due tonight from everything that we're going to follow on Thursday. On this one, it's a judicial delegate, 50th Assembly District. The address is listed as Warmer Avenue and petition as a Warmer Street. It is more of a street. Right. Yeah. Um. Right near Manhattan. You spent some time in the northern area. Oh, yeah. Still, uh, mm. this is a Green Party, actually, female member of the state committee. On her cover sheet, she is, appears as Marianne Schwab, and on the petition, she has included her initial Marianne T. Schwab. Uh, it's not a, I don't think it's a defect on the cover sheet to, ex uh, to leave out the middle initial. The address, and everything else. Unless there's, only, unless there's two in the address. Uh, we didn't check. You want us to check first? Yeah, could you? Mm -hmm. We got some. Masri and uh, Michelle uh, Lopez. Lopez, they are missing their zip codes on the petitions. So we would send out Prima Facia letter. You do a CO on your desk. Well, I guess it's a dual. It will yeah. work. It'll, they'll get one letter. Depends who caught first. CIU yeah. in some cases it would Right. But this has got no zip code. Right. And so here you want to either amend the cover sheet. No, I think no. that we, we've the team identified a defect. What we're recommending is only a prima facie defect, not a cover sheet defect. You don't need to sign it again, right? You're just sending it right to the prima facie. You don't need ours to do it, right? Just because we caught it. The staff caught it this weekend. And our process has normally been to present everything that they, they write up. That's why we get our recommend. <coughs> excuse me, our recommendation that the cover sheet's not the same. Well, let me ask you this, and this is just a hypothetical. Yeah. I know we have a limited number of commissioners. If we refer it to Panfashi, are we making an initial determination that we believe that it is Panfashi, then we would have to recuse ourselves no. from making that determination? No. Um, you see what I'm saying? Really, our recommendation is that the the cover sheet defect be rejected, but the prima facie finding well, as a rule. There's a cover sheet defect. The cover sheet doesn't match the that, petition. But this doesn't say we're going to send a cover sheet defect letter. Yes, th th that's what this no zip code on petitions. Well, we should have, yeah, it was inartfully written. It should read that the cover sheet does not match the petitions. That's an old zip code on its hand printed letter that has no zip code. This is handy, and that's one. Oh, no, I, th I think, again, someone could, th there was an inadvertent error that they, even in handwriting, because it's the county committee. Dr. Commissioner Rogers right, this is written poorly. It should be that the cover sheet, the address on the cover sheet does not the match the map. petition. found no cover sheet defect, but you uh, said that we should send the prima facie. Right. So, address on zip code does does not match address on petition. We'll make that over here. No, because your rules specifically say that if making a preliminary determination of a prima facie 
uh, such review findings, etc., shall be without prejudice to the board's subsequent determination of objection specifications and final determination filed pursuant to the provisions of the election law in these rules. So th this is only, it literally says a preliminary finding of a prima facie defect. We literally saying it's in effect an order to show cause. There may be reason that your petition is not good. Please, at least the reason why we think that. Please come to the board and explain why it is. Okay. So number one will be. The only two issues we're going to ask you to vote for is on number two, that the address on the cover sheet does not match the address on the petition. Our recommendation is no defect. That's the only one we're going to ask you to vote on the cover sheet. Yesterday, but I guess by four o'clock I was tired. <laughs> this is a county committee, and as you can see, um, they did not list the volume numbers that they were claiming or the page numbers on which they appear. You can see on the other page as well. This is all for the seventh of the Democratic Party. Schedule and commissioners, two things. The central part of the schedule is the ID number, the volume number, and the pages on which you found because they were within it. They left the pages out, and they also were not sure if it's only one volume, two volumes, but then put those numbers in. So these are all curable. The schedule has to be fixed. The key is with no page number, there's no one way anybody can challenge it because you don't know which pages to look at. Right. There's only one address for that name. I have the other two. I give you the part. I don't know. I give you the part of the organization. Yeah. Okay. And Hatton and Staten Island is in the odd numbered year for the county committee. He's got the Yeah. Schwab? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just rewriting this. The only Marianne Schwab breaks it at that address. I mean, that's Schwab. This goes back to the one of Mary Ann Schwab. The T is on the registration record. The T is on the petition. petition. It's not on the cover sheet. But she's the only one there. So our recommendation is that it should not be a defect. Just leaving out the middle initial. Mm -hmm. The cover sheet. Person, we're putting no way. Yes. You're voting no, that's not a defect. Right. This is on the petition, but not a cover sheet. These are the cover sheet defects. Right. There's a similar issue here. Uh, on the cover sheet, they claim Kevin Parker. And on uh, petition 1545, they have a Kevin S. Parker. He's the only uh, person registered at the address of Kevin S. Parker. Recommend it, again that the cover sheet would at the middle initial still be deemed valid and then not be found as a Not a defect, right. because then I would say yes, it's not a defect. No, it would be, no the, this is the defect that the staff identified. Our recommendation is that you find that it is, it, you do not deem it sufficient to generate a non compliance notice. Yeah, because I can be a little bit. Yes. Definitely. Right. We disagree with the staff. You have a different role with the staff, but yeah. not with the legal department. Right. Right. No, but you have, no, you, have a, you, you have a different role than the staff does. Mm -hmm. The staff that was over the weekend yeah, we is just mark up everything. And then the commissioners will determine whether or not it rises to the level that it needs a cure. I mean, I corrected this. It's the same situation we made it clear now that the address on the cover sheet does not match the petition. 
for item number two. Item one is going to be a prima facie related to the petition. And again, the question is since the zip code is on there, we would recommend that the address that you not find it not be a defect because if they are able to cure the petition, then the cover sheet will be correct. But I think I agree with you, Commissioner Michelle. It's handwritten. It's going to be very hard to do a printer's letter. If you hired someone to write mm -hmm. something for you, the answer would be no. That the cover sheet is okay. With the zip code. Right? That's a lawyer's answer. You're hired to a calligraphist letter. I didn't think of that. Now. <laughs> uh, this we have a similar issue to uh, one before, where um, we're asking you to only rule on the first defect, which is that the cover sheet does not state the office for which the candidate is running. It's also missing on the petition, but that would be a, a separate uh, prima facie defect. So we're only asking you to rule on the fact that the cover sheet has omitted the, uh, the candidate's office. But the cover sheet matches the petition. But the cover sheet still has to oh, basically describe the office. Welcome to the rules. It also is required by the petition. Mm -hmm. Problem is, is you have the same problem here with a handwritten petition. Uh, we may see a lot more calligraphy about this. <laughs> but we want to give them the opportunity to correct the cover sheet so that if you somehow deem the petition valid. But, right. But the idea, all right. Here is it when they correct the cover sheet, they think they can just do that. Well, they're going to get separate letters. Yeah, they're going to think that it could be confusing. Right, it's very confusing because you're going to say, yeah, put the zip code in, that's okay. But now I, I want to put the zip code here. No, that's not okay. I think I, I, actually, do we change our procedure saying the cases where there are prima facie defects will hold off on cover sheet defects? I don't know. I, 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 I don't I, know what the solution is, and unless you're going to... I don't know the solution, but all I'm saying is my I, case, I would argue, are, is that you, did, you, you allowed right. me to do the cover sheet. Maybe a new letter that combines both. Right, combines we did, and, uh, and, we've, and we've said to them that it's two separate matters, and that's what you hear, but the question then becomes, or, do we... Maybe one letter that spells out the issues a little more clearly. Either that, or do we hold off, and then maybe, deem, if you would ever, for example, if the cover sheet and the petition, let's say, lack the zip code, they give us the printer's letter and the commissioners deem it acceptable, do you apply it to both? Yeah, but then what if there's still a defect in the cover sheet? Yeah. Then we still have... Uh, like here, you're so right. The, like other, here. the other way is, is that if the address ain't on it, zip code, printer's letter, nothing is on it. No, but, but I think <laughs> the commissioners, that's why in the past what we've done is we've treated each as separate and distinct and no, but yes, saying, occasionally explain to people who didn't understand. No, but the case law says uh, the courts have already ruled where the printer's affidavit is sufficient, so we can't go against that and say you can't if give us a printer's affidavit at all. But if the address, but if you can't mail from the address, what the address is going to say? Yeah, but they might I think need, we need some testimony from the post office to say we can't mail this address because of the way it looks. Well, that, that's for the courts, not for us. Either the courts, or, or we will get back in some cases where people say, I never got notice. The answer is we're going to have the envelope saying it was returned by the post office as undeliverable to the address that you gave us on your petition. Absolutely. Well, we've, that we've argued to the courts, and I know even the most liberal of the justices have said that who prepared it? Your name is on the petition. They mailed to the address you gave them. Whose fault is that? And it's incomplete. That's where the courts have sustained us. Because the court says an incomplete address. The court says the same thing, too, is that the, yeah. the board is a ministerial agency. We are bound by the documents filed with us. But that's for the problem. And I think maybe, I think the other thing, as I said, I think we came up last week in one of the cover sheet committee. We may have to deploy, you know, the rule says we have to provide a complete address. We may have to specify what, what we believe is a complete address based on the bulk service. Right. And postal service rules say you must have a zip code and you must identify the apartment if you live in an apartment. Right? I think you're right. If you want to guarantee an apartment delivery, you need that because I've seen that personally. Like when right. the regular postman is not there, that stuff isn't there. He's come back from vacation. He says, I found all this sitting in the office. I do mailings every year for different things and you're going to see the stuff that comes back and I, I give it to the lady. She's, oh, this is That's my address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Time secured, yeah. This is an amended cover sheet. No, that was followed up right. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 I think the candidate here, on the same day, on the last night to file, first initially filed one cover sheet for each volume, and then as of right, without anything from us, 
file, attempt to file an amended cover sheet, in this case, leaving off the party name, two volumes, but only one ID number. But since he filed this as of right, it's treated as an original cover sheet. Original. We're going to give him notice to cure. Right. He, he filed something twice. else. Okay, he didn't appear on the on the. Oh, and, and, you know, and these numbers that he's claimed on the volumes here, it's incorrect. He doesn't appear on volume one fifty eight. He does appear on nineteen fifty eight. So that's why he's got to correct everything. Uh, and volume one fifty eight, which he claims on this volume, was never filed. The board. So we get the identification. He left so. off the nineteen. If we did find them, the two conditions we found them here is on 1958 and 1957. So he just got his numbers wrong entirely. That's why we we're going to give him a chance to cure. We spent a couple of hours yesterday trying to find out until we got the master list and there was no 158 ever filed. What else is that? That's it? I have one more that's waiting for Yeah, which one? It was the uh, opportunity oh, okay. to claim. Okay, we have to do claims. Okay. This is uh, amended, right? Proper. Let's see. What's the figure? Yeah, this was a 714. Yeah. The notice went out. second one before the three days ran, so we changed the rules and said that we will not present it to the Commissioner's Committee until the full three business days are run. So if somebody comes in on their own, that's fine, but it can mm -hmm. get out, especially now that we're broadcasting, that we said that your cover sheet, your amended cover sheet's no good, you come in a second bite of the apple. Right, so this doesn't go... The, right now, is after you wait the three days, we, if there's an amended cover sheet and then it's rejected by the Commissioners, the only relief now is to go to court. And that's the reason why we're trying to stick. It, what, what else is Rafe have for you? Just so those uh, opportunities to claim. Well, those can go out because where are they? He took them. Where? Uh, to get the cover sheets. Oh, okay. So I'll go over with this. Yeah, you can go get You got good stuff. You can stop, you can stop for a minute. Yeah. We have a uh, 42nd AD, uh, Female State Committee and Judicial Delegates. So if you look at the, um, at the cover sheet, this volume was not claimed for those offices. Those candidates appear on them, and there's no exclusionary language. For that one, 1421. So they get an opportunity to claim an extra volume. Um, just to make the record clear for anybody watching, um, we were missing several documents that needed to be presented to the commissioners. We took a brief pause while Mr. Luque and my staff and Mr. Savino located the documents, and they are now being presented to the commissioners to con for the continuation of the cover sheet review committee meeting. Thanks, Steve. And here we have this, the same issue. Uh, James Malidi. Is appears on the cover sheet, and those are the petitions claimed. But he also appears on these two cover sheet, on these two petitions, excuse me, and the exclusionary language is missing. So we're going to give them opportunities to claim those volumes, yeah. and that concludes. Which, that concludes the presentation of the cover sheet review committee. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. I just got a text from.